Hello, this is News Mongolian MNB World. I am Jugder Rambold. And uh, for our top stories. Illegally exported fossils returned to Mongolia. The 2024 Japan-Mongolia Aerospace Cooperation Symposium was held. Blue Pearl Festival held in Hufskul province. For other news, stay with us. As part of the government's national heritage campaign, a set of fossils that were illegally exported has been successfully returned to Mongolia. This marks the fifth repatriation of smuggled fossils, following handovers in 2013, 2015 and 2017, resulting from an ongoing partnership between the U.S. and Mongolia. The fossils considered vital to Mongolia's national heritage were illegally exported, violating international laws. The initiative highlights the commitment of both nations to addressing the unlawful trade of cultural and natural artifacts. This time, around 40 bones from six different types of dinosaurs were returned to Mongolia. We are unveiling the intriguing remains of Alia Reim Saltai, a member of the Tyrannosaurid family. The discovery of these fossilized remnants provides a captivating window into the ancient world. Until today, it was believed that only two fossils of this type were found in Mongolia. It's good that the fossils have undergone meticulous technical processing. After conducting studies and registration, I think we can display the findings soon. Such findings contribute to the enrichment of our scientific knowledge and understanding of ancient ecosystems. By delving into the details of these returned artifacts, researchers can glean insights into the biology, behavior and evolutionary adaptations of this species, further enhancing our comprehension of prehistoric life. The presence of these returned fossils in Mongolia opens up exciting possibilities for comparative studies and research. Scientists now have the unique opportunity to compare these artifacts with other fossils in Mongolia, creating a comprehensive data set that can significantly advance our understanding of prehistoric life in the region. The fossils will now be housed at the Mongolian Natural History Museum. The Institute of Paleontology at the Mongolian Academy of Sciences will study these artifacts, providing valuable insights into Mongolia's prehistoric past. The 2024 Japan-Mongolia Aerospace Cooperation Symposium convened focusing on collaborative efforts between the two nations to harness a satellite technology to address a pasture land degradation. The symposium provided a platform for experts, scientists and policymakers from Japan and Mongolia to share insights, research findings and strategies for leveraging satellite applications to combat the challenges of pasture land degradation. A key area of discussion during the symposium centered around the innovative use of satellites for monitoring and managing pasture lands. Japanese and Mongolian experts showcased how satellite imagery and remote sensing technologies can play a pivotal role in assessing the health and sustainability of pasture lands. Satellites with advanced sensors can capture high-resolution images allowing for detailed analysis of vegetation cover, land use changes and overall pasture land conditions. This data is invaluable to addressing the extent of degradation, identifying vulnerable areas and implementing targeted conservation and rehabilitation efforts. The symposium highlighted collaborative projects between Japan and Mongolia that utilize satellite data for real-time pasture land monitoring. This approach enables swift responses to emerging issues such as overgrazing and environmental changes, contributing to the sustainable management of these critical ecosystems. Satellite data facilities further study and planning in the agricultural sector by analyzing a wide variety of satellite data. Our company is willing to cooperate with Mongolia in the agricultural sector by producing low-cost sensors for monitoring. 
The use of satellites not only contributes to peace and security, but also plays a significant role in putting resources into economic circulation. Satellite technology facilitates various economic activities, and our country is willing to cooperate with major countries, such as the US, Japan, and China in aerospace and satellite technology. Discussions also delved into capacity-building initiatives. Japan has already shared its expertise in satellite technology with Mongolia, fostering the development of local capabilities for effective pasture land monitoring. The Blue Pearl Ice Festival was held in Hatrasom in Hufskal province on March 2nd and 3rd. This festival actively contributes to the development of winter tourism in Mongolia. Over the years, the festival has become a cherished tradition and a key driver for advancing winter tourism in Mongolia. The scope of the festival has expanded since its inception in 2001, with various events highlighting the unique qualities of Hofskot province. All the camps operating during the Blue Pearl Festival are connected to the electricity grid from March 1st to April 13th. The ministry has pledged 1.8 billion MNT for this event to support the operation of camps during winter. In 2023, the Huskal region attracted 18,000 foreign tourists and 108,000 domestic tourists. This year's festival had a range of engaging activities and showcases, providing attendees with a glimpse into the region's cultural and natural wonders. My piece shows reindeer and a tree decorated with traditional Mongolian designs. It also has squirrel, and because the warm season approaches, it also included a snowdrop as a sign of spring. As the Blue Pearl Festival continues to grow in popularity, it stands as a testament to Mongolia's commitment to sustainable tourism and celebrating its rich winter heritage. Now please uh, take a look at currency exchange rates uh, provided by the Mongol Bank. Now please have foreign news partnered with international news agencies. Malaysia's government said Sunday it may renew the hunt for missing Malaysia Airlines flight MH370 as a memorial was held in Kuala Lumpur 10 years after its disappearance. The Boeing 777 plan carrying 239 people, mostly Chinese nationals, from the Malaysian capital Kuala Lumpur to Beijing vanished from radar shortly after taking off on March 8, 2014. Satellite data showed the plane deviated from its flight path and was believed to have crashed in the southern Indian Ocean. But an expensive multinational government search failed to turn up any clues, although several pieces of debris washed ashore on the East African coast and Indian Ocean islands. A private search in 2018 by Ocean Infinity also found nothing but the tragedy sparked moves to bolster aviation safety. No reductance. As I've mentioned numerous times, as far as Malaysian is government, government is concerned, we are committed to that search and the search must go on. But I'm very, very confident that the, gov uh, the government of Malaysia and the cabinet will approve uh, such proposal. Oh, I'm on top of the world. You know, these... It's what we wanted to hear, and we hoped for that for a very long time. And he's made a lot of promises to us, in the fact that he will help find the plane. And there's no two ways about it, so I'm so thankful. One day, there'll be someone will come forward and tell us what's really going on. The truth. That's all we want, until we're longing for that, yeah, until today. She said she is thankful that she may now have a chance for full closure and say a final goodbye. Family members of passengers from Malaysia, Australia, China and India pay tribute to their loved ones during the event lighting a candle on stage to remember them. 
thousands of senior doctors rallied in Seoul on Sunday to express their support for junior doctors who have been on a strike for nearly two weeks over a government plan to sharply increase the number of medical school admissions. The rally came as the government said it would begin to take steps Monday to suspend the medical license of nearly 9,000 medical interns and residents for defying government orders to end their walkouts, which have uh, disrupted hospital operations. Protesters chanted slogans, sang and held placards criticizing the government's plan. There were no reports of any violence at the rally. As of Thursday night, 8,945 of the country's 13,000 medical interns and residents were confirmed to have left their work sites, according to the health ministry. The government has repeatedly said they would face minimum three-month license suspensions and indictments by prosecutors if they didn't return by February 29th. The striking doctors are a fraction of South Korea's 140,000 doctors, but they account for about 30 to 40 percent of the total doctors at some major hospitals where they assist senior doctors during surgeries and other treatments while training. Their walkouts have subsequently caused numerous cancellations of surgeries and medical treatments at the hospitals. Senior doctors have staged a series of rallies back in the young doctors but haven't joined the walkouts. If they also launch strikes, that would pose a major blow to South Korea's medical service. The government wants to increase South Korea's medical school enrollment quota by 2000 starting next year, from the current 3,058 to better deal with the country's rapidly aging population. Officials say South Korea's doctor-to-population ratio is one of the lowest among developed countries, but many doctors have vehemently protested the plan, saying medical schools can't handle such a sharp increase in the number of students. They say the recruitment plan also doesn't address a chronic shortage of doctors in essential but low-paying specialties like pediatrics and emergency departments. Doctors say adding too many new doctors would also result in an increase in public medical expenses since greater competition would lead to excess treatments. But critics say the doctors simply worry about receiving a lower income due to the rising number of doctors. German Chancellor Olaf Scholz said authorities were investigating a purported recording published by Russian state media in which German military officers discussed support for Ukraine, including the potential use of Taurus missiles. Scholz called it a very serious matter in a comment to reporters on the sidelines of a visit to the Vatican on Saturday. He said German authorities were working to clarify the matter very carefully, very intensively and very quickly. In the purported 38-minute recording, military officers discussed the question of how the tower's long-range cruise missiles could be used by Ukraine. A debate has been taking place in Germany over the whether to supply the missiles as Ukraine faced setbacks on the battlefield after two years of war and with military aid from the United States being held up in Congress. Earlier this week, Scholz said he remains reluctant to send the Taurus missiles to Ukraine, pointing to a risk of Germany becoming directly involved in the war. His hesitancy is a source of friction in his three-party coalition and also annoyed Germany's conservative opposition. Germany is now the second biggest supplier of military aid to Ukraine after the United States and is further stepping up its support this year. But Scholz has stalled for months on Ukraine's desire for Taurus missiles, which have a range of up to 500 kilometers and could, in theory, be used against targets far into Russian territory. All right, that's all for today. Thank you for staying tuned. We'll see you next time with more news and updates. Have a good day.